hello and welcome back to another video. I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year. It has been a little bit of time since I did some inking and this is actually an inking that I've just I finished for Christmas as a gift. I have three in total so you will have the odd inking video um, in amongst all our usual content. Um, this is a lovely, I believe it's a black dashant please correct me if I'm wrong, it does look like a dash on to me. Um, the picture is quite dark, so I thought I would show a little bit more of my process of how I set up to ink um, in this video. So as you all know, if you've been watching me for a while, and if not, um, I really enjoy using the gridding method to ink. So that's where I draw a grid on my reference photo, I draw a grid on my final piece of paper that I want to do my inking on and then I basically just have a look at each individual square and I draw what I see in that square on my corresponding piece of paper. Now you can use this method to shrink down a reference or also enlarge the reference so all you would do there is draw your normal size grid of whatever centimetre by centimetre square you'd prefer and then you will enlarge that so say if I wanted this to be double the size I would double the size square so this is a two by two centimeter square so i would draw a four by four centimeter square and just copy what is in that square but larger and um, so it's a really cool method i highly recommend um it just saves it well it's a bit more time consuming than say using a light box but i find that it kind of tests your drawing skills a little bit more you're not just tracing you are trying to break down a picture into its shapes and i i think that's a really good way of looking at a reference when you are working from it especially when you're doing inkings like this this is what I have to teach myself even if I didn't have the grid here and I was inking after sketching it out I would basically look at each section and I would think okay the fur goes this way in this section but also down here so I need to break that up and do this section first and then do this section second so it's a really good way of breaking up your piece just to make it a little bit more manage manageable it's not as daunting at first um and I just think it's a really good method of working so that's what I basically do to set up the sketch now I chose this piece to do this video on as as my more in-depth sketching process because I struggled with seeing the nose a little bit this picture printed out a lot darker um than the reference on my computer but even so the the reference on the computer is still quite dark there's not much definition around this point here and so sometimes it can be really difficult to get your angles correct and and just work from that so my method of doing this now i have an ipad so i can do it on there but i would imagine you could probably get some free sketching software on your iphone or your mobile phone in general or maybe even your computer to do this with um i just happen to have an ipad so i will flip onto the footage of me recording my screen here so as you can see i um i basically have in procreate i'm working in at the moment is the the reference photo here i actually manipulated the reference photo to have um a little bit more contrast and a little bit brighter just to bring out the um shadows a little bit to define areas so um let me highlight this on a new layer so as you can see this muzzle area i have highlight i have brightened a little bit so then you get the definition around here and this bit's not blending in quite as much um likewise with the ear here and the ear at the bottom here it's still ever so slightly not much not very visible um but i can kind of see that the ear kind of goes like that so that's a bit a bit easier to see and it's just it's better to manipulate your photos so you can refer to them in a sketching sense and also a contrast sense when you are doing color even but especially when you are doing black and white inking so yes i bring in my reference photo and then i actually take a photo of my sketch so i will finish the sketch i'll take a photo of it especially if i'm not happy with something then I usually insert the photo into here, um, grab it, oh, hold on, why is it not grabbing? I usually grab it like this and enlarge it so that it's basically roughly the same size as the reference image on my screen 
like that and then I will usually I will usually reduce the opacity of my sketch just so I can see the reference image below but I can still see the lines behind my um, paper there so I can still see my sketch lines then I will usually grab that image again and I will drag it so that it basically fits perfectly over my reference image so sometimes you might need to rotate it enlarge it make it smaller but don't distort the image so down here i can always distort my image um, and pull sections out etc you don't want to do that you want to make sure that the image is uniform and also make sure your image is taken from above and is as square as possible you don't want it at an angle otherwise that will distort your sketch and therefore it wouldn't match up anyway you need it as flat as possible similar to the reference photo if you know what i mean so then i will make sure that that is laid over there perfectly and then again i will just reduce that opacity um just to kind of see the reference image even more underneath and i can see where things have lined up um whether things are in the right place sometimes things might be a little bit lower um i've already done this so that's why my reference image pretty much matches up to the um, sketch but yeah I like to do that so I, actually above this ear on the left side as you're viewing this um, it is a little bit lower so I just need to bring that up slightly um, but it's a really handy way of just checking that your sketch is pretty much on point um, and the, cause, because sometimes you might you might look at the squares and you think you've drawn it exactly how you can see it in the square but it might just be slightly you know the the angle of the the curve might be slightly off or something like that and just those little things can sometimes make your image not look quite right um and things like that can just just throw off the whole face especially when it is a face or something recognizable like this so it's a really handy way of doing it i really enjoy that another way of doing it is also once you've laid that grid down sometimes you may want to add a new grid on top um and likewise if you don't want to waste ink and print this out just bring bring your reference image into a software like this and draw a grid straight on top like that and that can also work um and it's just handy to just see that definition a little bit more and see what's in those squares a little bit more especially if you have photo manipulated um to bring out the contrast in the darks and lights that can also help so i just thought i would show that um kind of to show what my process is in terms of not just sketching it out there's a little bit more to to it than just sketching out and um it can just be really helpful to do that and see the 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 sketch in reference to your reference image it's, it's just really handy to do so i thought i would show that before i get into this video and likewise to all my other inking videos i will be using my bortoletti glass dip pen and my bortoletti ink um, these are really handy they're a little bit more on the pricey side but I highly recommend they've just got a finer tip um, I've seen a lot of glass dips pens around at the moment and they've got quite a, a stubbed tip and I don't really know how fine you can get your lines with that but I, I just highly recommend this I will be getting a new one of these probably in a year or two because I will actually cry if this ever breaks <laughs> um, but yes we will be using those for this and um just as usual getting into some inking there so i hope that was a bit helpful um but anyway let's just watch me ink this out and then we'll reconvene at the end and talk a little bit more about my thoughts and feelings of this inking <laughs>
a finished inking i think this was more difficult than i thought and in hindsight i think i would have brought this head up slightly higher on the paper but i think i still had my mindset of my inktobers where i was doing it kind of central of the page and then it suddenly dawned on me that i still needed to add the body in um i did a little bit of artistic license and the body actually comes up under the ear here and what i did was i took what i shaved off here and put it onto this side um just to equal out the proportions but i didn't want to lose this shape of the head um and just lose that in in the detail basically but i really i really like it i think it looks good i like the way i've managed to capture the shininess of the black fur a black dog's always hard but just trying to do the lights and the darks is is always a win there um I think I actually might go in after I film this segment and just deepen up this shadow here and round that off a little bit. But I like it. I think the eyes turned out nice. Um, it's perfectly cleaned up um, and it will serve a real good um, inking and a gift for Christmas. So um, that's good. Halfway through this, as you saw, well, actually not probably halfway through, most most of the way through towards the end i actually did run out of ink there was just a few drops left in here which i poured into my new ink pot as you can see this one is very well used i will probably wash this out because it is a lovely glass pot and i might fill it with some other ink um if i've got um, a bottle to decant from there um i also to help me with the body just to see if i wanted it to be dark or something i used my um technique of using cellophane so this is what i mocked up first and then i actually added that slither on there um using this and that's just how i see whether it's going to look right whether i want it to be dark or a bit more of a lighter body um and that seemed to work so 
that's the end of this video and I hope you have enjoyed it. Please hit that thumbs up if you have. It really helps me out and I hope to see you soon in another video. So stay tuned for that and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.